Hi, welcome to Things to Consider. Today we're going to talk about the considerations in choosing a ring vat compressed air operated conveyor. What these items are used for is for conveying materials over a long distance. They produce a very high vacuum to be able to pick up the material and take it. Now, they do utilize compressed air. So the ideal applications for units like this are either where the compressed air pressure can't be low, so you're not utilizing a lot of energy. For example, if you're running trim through it, you can use it at fairly low pressure. If you um, have an intermittent application, these things are ideal. Uh, one very popular application, for example, is loading resin into hoppers on injection molding machines. They're very compact, they're instant on, instant off. You utilize it to load the hopper, then you turn it off. So it ends up using actually very little energy, but very, very high convenience because of its compact nature and its instant on and off feature. So what are some of the things to consider uh, in choosing the correct compressed air operated unit? First of all is the vertical distance. How far up do you actually want to convey? Now, the larger the unit, the lower the vacuum it produces. So you want to get the unit as small as possible, especially if you're going higher up. So vertical distance is a consideration. Horizontal distance as well is the same consideration. You can convey a lot further horizontally than you can vertically, but again, the farther the distance you want to convey, the more vacuum you will need. Third, the part dimensions. You don't want the material to get stuck inside the unit. The general rule is this. You take the maximum dimension of the part you're conveying and the inside diameter of the ring vac air rocket conveyor should be double that dimension. Then it won't get stuck. Now there are exceptions. Let's say you want to feed a metal tube through it. Um, say the shape of the, in the shape of the pen that I have in my hand. As long as you can feed that unit through and guide it in, then of course that will also take it and it will shoot it across to wherever you want to take it. The nature of the material is the next thing you have to consider. What's the weight? What's the uh, dimension? What's the, what's the density of the material? That's going to make a difference as well. Generally, you have to have some guidelines from the offices, from our offices to be able to choose the right ring rack for that because um, it will make a difference. Tests have been done conveying different materials to give you guidelines on, on how the nature of the material will affect how much you can actually convey over a period of time. And finally, where do you place the unit? The unit should be placed about one-third up from the source and, and downstream about two-thirds of the distance you have to convey. So let's say you're conveying nine meters. Uh, you want it to have three meters on the inlet drawing the material in, and then you want to have six meters downstream where you're taking it to. That's the ideal placement for making the ring back air, air operated conveyor work the most effectively. So, things to consider, vertical distance, horizontal distance, the dimensions of the part, the nature of the material itself, its weight, its density, and where you actually have end up having to place the unit.